Oh, good to know. Okay, so I'm gonna put the bell ringer right now. Friday is September 3rd. I was doing something while we were there. All right. So detail, how can you relate the article Teenage Wasteland? So this was the article you read yesterday. You wrote your response. And C. Wright Mill's sociological imagination. So we first need to understand what the sociological imagination is and uh, how we can maybe relate this to the article you just read. So maybe there's some factors that we maybe need to take into account when understanding the unfortunate article that you read yeah, and the sociological imagination. You said you like that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I read it before bed. Yeah, it's depressing, isn't it? It's kind of sad. So I'll give you some time to write that down. And we'll go over it. We'll discuss it. Um, I will go over the three questions at the bottom of the article. That's what we'll discuss kind of in class today. And then uh, I'll give you the rest of the period to maybe shape up your, your, your writing. Well, we can't fix it. We're already taking yeah. the already. You can't like edit it because your submission site only allow one submission. Like, really? So we yeah. can't edit it once you hit turn in. Maybe I can edit the assignment to make two submissions. No, I'm Okay. All right. Well, if you're done, done, then you don't want to try to shape it up again. And that'd be fun. I have a question. What's up? What do you mean? Like how it, how it relates, like how it correlates? The imagination? Like how you can compare them to each so other? Like my dad's generation and not my generation. I'm just trying to understand what you're trying, like relating the two yeah, right. generations. She's asking if that would be a good like, response for yes response. Oh. Uh, that's what I did. I compared the two and how it like, could affect it. And like, how it yeah, that would be good. It's a good response. Like, yeah, that would be something different, obviously. Um, I think that would be nice to know. Especially what kind of outlets we have for entertainment to keep us interested. What's that? No, there you go. You just threw it out there. That's what I did too. Man. I feel like you guys aren't very confident in this here. Well, it was kind of, it wasn't difficult, but. It was like a hard topic to um, Yeah. I tried my best. That's all I can say. It counts for something. There you go. So we gotta have that arm wrestle here. What? Oh my yeah. gosh. That's kind of almost it. <laughs> Better try lifting. You that. did not. <laughs> Wasn't that in a couple seconds? I got a bowl cut up after soccer season. Wow. <laughs> peanut butter at all time. Peanut butter. Yeah. Protein. Protein. Fueling up. Chocolate milk, huh? But I bet I could be if I bowl cut up. What do you think? Maybe. Maybe. All right, so let's go over this, guys. Sociological imagination. What is it? What does that mean? I know we mentioned this before. I know I talked about it before. Go ahead, Leah. Isn't it just like the mindset and the findings of certain Okay. All right. All right. What else can we add to it? So it's almost like a perspective analysis, right? So 
whatever issues that we might be going through personally, okay, we can relate it to a societal standpoint. So how is society facing maybe some of the same issues that I, right? Or maybe some of the achievements that I, I, I see, how can we relate that to, let's say, society? All right, so the sociological imagination, when it comes to C. Wright Mills, what he talks about, what he describes is how can we fit our perspective, right? And apply it to a society standpoint, okay? That's kind of what I'm looking for here. So how can we relate this to teenage wasteland? It's kind of what you wrote about, right? What do you have, Taylor? You see what happened in my life. Okay. Teenagers got into that house. That happened in my life. That happened in my teenagers. It got worse than what it was then. All right. So there might be an argument to that. I mean, we, we don't really know. We can't, I mean, we can maybe compare it to, like you said, with our parents, like what kind of stressors or what kind of uh, issues did you go through in your life that we can relate it to what we we're experiencing. So yeah, online platform, social media, definitely a lot different. You might see some more, more issues or concerns through that route. Brianna? Different phrases. Phrases? Okay. All right. So like how we can relate these sayings and, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like almost like name calling or teasing. Is that what you're talking That's about? That's how I did it. Okay. I put it in what the parents might think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Leah? Um, back when Mills came up with his study, that was back theory so the list of like side effects symptoms that we came up with is a lot different than it is now um, based on our society we live in and the pressures that are put on teens today good and they were also talking about how like the teen suicide rate has been going up drastically and it's still lower than the adult rate but it's getting up there mm -hmm. which is like alarming yeah it's so concerning isn't it they're looking more at like the pressures put on teens and like different standards we're held to today okay yeah good job good job yeah um i think we all can agree to that i mean there's many cases scenarios where uh, you're, you're almost on film all the time right uh, there you really can't get away with some of the things that let's say your parents got away with i know that i hear all these stories oh this is what we used to do this is what we used to do it's like well there's no way we can get away with that now okay especially with this digital footprint anymore there's no way of getting away with tracking certain your things. Location. Tracking your location, yeah. Seeing exactly where you are. Man, man, you can't get away with anything. Roy? Still working? Still working? Okay. All right. Sarah? I said, like, what is it about, like, the pressure that we have to do? Yeah, good job. So definitely the norms that uh, our society kind of places some of these, these guidelines of what we should be doing. Right. And there's so many songs out there about like, oh, when you go out and get a job, what was it, 21 Pilots? Go out stressed and get a out. job. Yeah, stressed out. Yeah, we could really relate that song to what we're discussing with the sociological imagination. It's like, how can we relate our life and uh, talk about some of these issues that we're going through? And uh, really, let's say the older generation, our parents, don't understand. Right? I think it's ever changing too. We're going to get in that same stage eventually when we progress through life. Taylor? Yeah. It's like now parents are more about people that are on the work hard rather than the production of their volunteers. And if your kid is going to be pressured with anxiety, um, stuff like that, it's like they don't really need any of their own things because when they were kids, they were our age they their parents didn't see it as mm -hmm. they thought in their in their time there was nothing else to talk about now they don't actually believe it because they don't think everyday people can have problems with depression and anxiety yeah so bipolar depression like 
And I think that goes to, like, let's just think about college, university, right? I mean, if I don't know if your parents went to college or university, you know, any university, let's say, or at higher education. I know my mom never did. My dad, two-year degree. So when we're looking at, let's say, our life, okay, and how we can relate to theirs, like schooling's a little bit more involved, right? You need to have this bachelor's of, you know, this, this degree to show that you can obviously gain a job of your choosing or your one. And uh, at their, you know, their time period, maybe that wasn't necessary. Right? You didn't have to actually go to a four-year school. You didn't have to gain your master's, right? Good. And let's face it too, the economy is totally different than what it was back then. Exactly. I know my dad always talks about some of, uh, some of his student loan debts. And it's like, okay, it's not even comparable. Like it's not even comparable whatsoever. So oh, I had to pay off 10 grand, 10 grand. If that's all I had to pay off, I'd be really happy. But come on now, Chris. That pressure was worked off though, like, like after high school and college. So I heard you were saying that. What's that? Uh, like, from high school and stuff like that, you have that pressure and all that after high school and into college. Yeah, you like, find these. It doesn't really matter about how you know, long you're in something or anything. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're more on your own. You have more of an independence. You find social groups that you can fit into and uh, that appreciate you, who you are, right? And you kind of hover towards those groups. You hover towards those people. And yeah, you enjoy things a little bit more. But at the same time, you understand now, like with college, and when you go there and say, well, oh, I have all this debt that's just racking up right now. Oh my gosh. But never. am I going to pass my class? Am I going to gain my degree? Yeah, there's other pressures. What's up? Okay. So like, oh, where are you buying your clothing from? Yeah. Okay. Or, or like, if you're not skinny. Okay. If you don't have a certain body type, you can probably put some money up for All right. Yeah. And Employment. Mm -hmm. it follows then with social media. Social media. Yeah. And, and like beauty standards. These expectations, right? Yeah. It's like relationships nowadays aren't actual. Because about of people. It's about like your looks. Yeah, it's about like that. Your I don't know that one thing. <laughs> I'm not saying it. Okay. You're an adult. You can figure it out. Um. <laughs> All right. Jeez. <laughs> Physical thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. All right. Figured it. All right. So you guys good with that bell ringer? Yes. Okay. We got into it, which is good. That's what I want to talk about, right? That's some stuff and uh, some information that I think is important to discuss and go we over. Talk about some we didn't. No. Oh, uh, well, it was really just the sociological imagination. I think that was a term I put up we before. Talked about Emil Durkheim. We didn't get Okay. Well. We talked about the sociological imagination, all right? Yeah. I know we did. I just wrote things down. I, don't think, I think it was one of your terms. I really, well, do you have a term? I don't. Oh, yeah, it is. Here's the term. Oh, crap. Um, that was not there. Yes, it, it is. Was. It was. I did not put that in this morning. No, but we didn't talk about that. Yeah, we didn't do any of this. Okay. That was actually my next slide. So, what's up? So, for my age, mm -hmm. um, what? I'm trying with my Wi Fi. Listen, I sat there for 15 minutes and it still wouldn't work. I said to Taylor, uh, I said, Yes, you do it. Yes, she goes, Did you do it? I'm like, No. So this is, I guess, the slide I forgot to really oh, go over C. Wright Mills, but it talks about this sociological imagination. I know I mentioned that with vocab term. So in all reality, like I mentioned before, okay, what I talked about and discussed is sociological imagination is just how we can fit our personal lives and uh, analyze it at a societal level, okay? And that's what really I was kind of looking for with this writing assignment. And I know I went over that term before. I might not have mentioned it in C. Wright Mills before, like his name, but the term is really what his perspective, his perspective is, what his idea of uh, sociology should be. 
And like you guys just mentioned, there's many different aspects we can put into that sociological imagination. Okay, we can talk about different time periods. We can talk about how our generation's a little bit different than let's say our parents, our grandparents, okay, so on and so forth. And I'm glad you made those correlations. Like, I'm glad you made those relationships, okay? Those, those, uh, you can say those, you can see the tendencies amongst these both, okay? All right, but again, society, not people's personal failings is the cause of social problems, okay? So again, how we can relate that to the article you just read. Uh, what, what in society is pushing, like we just read in Teenage Wasteland, these four individuals, these teenagers, to commit suicide, to make this pact. What are some influential factors? Okay, I won't say influential, but what are some factors that push for this to occur, to happen, right? Uh, there's many things you can analyze that you can talk about. Right? And uh, I'm glad you guys related to generations, right? I'm glad you related to different, different um, you know, you know, people and what they're going through. And that time period, I guess we could say, relates a lot to my parents' generation okay, in the 70s, the 80s, when this occurred, and uh, you know maybe some of the stressors that they went through. And we can obviously talk about how it might be similar in today's world with what we're going through, some of the stress, the anxiety, and how it's totally different, especially with the inclusion of social media, right? These high expectations, like you guys talked about, with higher education, right? Uh, what we need to do at a societal standpoint to fit in that maybe we don't, right? Maybe we don't have those you know, or share the same aspects. Does that make sense? Okay. So real quick, let's go over these three questions. We can discuss it, we can go over it. And then I'll let you guys uh, obviously shape up that, uh, that, that writing if you'd like to. I can maybe set it for you know, whatever, a second submission. So if you guys wanna tweak it, that's fine. If not, if you're good with it, you can just leave that one submitted. So let me bring this activity up. When you give us time, can you help with the annotation thing, with the citation thing? Because I think I was wrong. Okay. Yeah, I can go over that. Because I looked at the APA format, we can't find that. All right. Yeah. That's just more of a guideline, so you can just match. Like, let's say the article that we were just reading, TJ's Wasteland, it says article name, the, the author, the year was, you know, obviously. I, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. It'll be easier if I just go through it with you. But real quick, the assignments. Okay, let's go to the three questions at the bottom of this article. Let's discuss it. Let's go. All right, number one. What is it about the society in which the four young people live that contribute to their suicide? What do you think? Go ahead, Brianna. What's that? Viewpoints. Okay. What about? Yeah. And you kind of saw, I mean, what society thought of these individuals, right? They said, oh, they're outcasts. Uh, they're druggies. They were people that just did not fit in. It almost seemed that they weren't caring about what occurred of the suicides. Like, oh, well, they're outcasts. They didn't fit in. Um, like you said, they, they called them druggies. And uh, it was almost like a burden for that society, right? That these people should almost leave. And in this case, when they committed suicide, it's like, uh, it was expected, right? It was expected. They criticized them afterwards. They criticized them afterwards, yeah. It was kind of like how I said, it was the kind of society that they lived in back uh, when they were 19. Yeah. And then they were It was like 1970s, 1980s. Um, but that's like behind my parents' stuff. So that's why exactly what was in the article is what parents did their Mm -hmm. because they didn't really understand it yeah understand how it actually affects communities how it is how what they say actually uh, you know affects people yeah. we could just say on a community basis they have strict guidelines right and if you didn't fit into it all right you're the outcast just leave us alone uh you know pretty much if you look stay in your same you stay in, uh yeah. same perspective right yeah. good what else we have for number one what do you think chris 
What do you think about that society push for these individuals, right, to maybe commit suicide? Go ahead. I just think that there are a lot of outcasts that are very good. And uh, it's just the way that it is. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So there's really no relatability. There was no, um, I guess, acceptance of the society of these these individuals, right? No one decided to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Leah, what do you think with number one? Or do we talk about it pretty much already? Yeah. All right. Brianna? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. So there was no outlets for these people to communicate to. I mean, you'd think you'd have, let's say a counselor at the school for them to talk to. Maybe there's a, you know, other social groups that they can get into extracurricular activities, try to persuade these individuals, maybe to participate a little bit more and maybe actually, I don't know, fit into society's norms, but if they didn't want to, they don't have to, I guess. And uh, I thought just with the article, like you said, even after their death, they didn't really care too much about this, this scenario, this situation. And I think that just goes to show what societal viewpoints of these individuals really were. All right, two, do you think teen suicide is an issue all across the United States? Explain your view. Taylor, I saw your hand up for a while now, so. Yeah, actually. Um, you do think so? I do. Because many teens have been or until you have a mental breakdown. Okay. People look at you like, once you have a mental breakdown in a public place, it's like, people look at you for some reason. Uh -huh. They're like, oh, that person's not okay. Maybe we should give them help. Oh, but they don't fit into society's expectations. They don't fit into society's like, it's almost like when you're traveling to, uh, you know, let's say an urban area, you're going to a, you know, a football game, baseball game, whatever, you see a homeless man. Do you stop and talk to him or do you just try to avoid him? You just walk by. What's that? Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, people need, you want to help them. But at the same time, it's like, okay, I don't want to be drug out here, right? Um, maybe this person's looking to take my wallet, take my money. Uh, you, you just think of the, I guess you could say the, the bad tendencies, right? Even though you want to be helpful, uh, you, you think of the worst outcomes, right? Okay. It's unfortunate, but it's life, right? And that's what our society kind of shapes us to think. It's like, okay, just keep walking. Don't even make eye contact. Don't even talk to this person. Just keep walking, right? Is it, does it make you a bad person for doing that? No, but do you feel some sort of guilt? Yeah, yeah I do. Leah? So in a whole, in the United States, people only see you when you show them. So like in school and around people, maybe you like are certainly like when you're not around people, maybe you are like not okay. Yeah. I know that. Sometimes it's like your child is like where you don't want people to know that. Yeah, go ahead. So they they only see what you show them and then they don't know that you need help. And sometimes people see asking for help or being upset as a burden on people. Yeah. So they don't want to tell people. I think that's a good point. I mean we try to hide our feelings, try to hide our emotions and our society so bend on uh, pretty much being tough right try to fight through your own issues your own grievances don't try to burn someone else with them and you know what maybe we should reach out and actually have talks about it right good job and i think we can relate that too with simone biles right with her mental health and how she talked about in the olympics she's the best of all time right and everybody knows it but even her uh, the stress the anxiety of the situation competing at that world level got to her Maybe she had an injury. A lot of people say that, but at the same time, her mental state, how can that affect her? All right, good. Three, what might be done to prevent deaths like this? What do you think? Roy, what do you think? Okay. All right. So maybe the society as a whole should look at 
you know, the way they treat others, way they uh, try to uh, have some sort of communal guidelines and maybe, maybe not expect as much. Good job. Leah? Rather than yelling at teens right away, if they get like a bad grade or if they do something wrong, try to think about why that happened or if they were trying their best. Awesome. Instead of just blaming them and saying like, they're failing, like, just because that might be their best. Yeah, good job. And that really hits on the sociological imagination. How can we place ourselves in other people's shoes and how can we relate these issues to society, right? Good job. Good job. And that's what exactly I'm looking for with this article. So just rewrite my article. Oh, no, I don't no, want to say you rewrite it, but. Right. Well, I think it's just basically like assumptions. That's why I put it. Yeah. So I don't assume before we know anything. So that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Even after this terrible event, do you think it's going to change that community's no. viewpoint of these individuals? Based no. on the way they reacted afterwards. Definitely. definitely not, right? And how do we change that? I mean, it's tough. It's hard. And it's, uh, it's something that, I mean, even if you try to inspire change in a community like that, you're going to be looked at as an outcast too. It's like, ah, get out of here, right? You're not fitting in. Just move on. Leah? I feel like nowadays, though, the difference is when suicides and deaths happen, Communities kind of come together. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Like, back then, they just they didn't really care at all, but now it's more of like a mm -hmm. everybody comes together and tries to like they like even if you didn't know the person, it's still like yeah. Really like feels it, you know? I agree. Yeah. Good job. Good point. Good point. I think now, especially comparing it to then, it uh, it's a little different. Right. A little different. I think we're more accepting of these. Uh, of these new changes and these new ideas of where we need to move as a as a society as a whole. What's up? It affects them, right? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Or if it, if it affects them, right? If it's like yeah. a family member or friend that's really dear to them, okay, then it's a huge, like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Like, we need to really focus on changing our societal guidelines and expectations of these people. All right, Taylor. I feel like going along with that, it's like if it's too late, then they'll feel like it's their fault if you came to them. Okay. Talk to them and they just push you away. All right. Until. All right, good. Then they'll feel like it's their fault. And then they'll get in that bad, like, I guess, like, a bad place. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like, I didn't help them. They came to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you guys get what I'm going, oh, trying to obviously get towards with this. Uh, this article, I think, is important to see how the society reacted to these individuals. Uh, maybe we can look back at it and say, okay, as a societal standpoint, uh, how do we try to include these individuals to try to prevent a suicide like this? Okay, uh, how can we try to make sure that events like this do not happen again? And from the article, it was a little hard to read, I thought. It's just, they didn't really care, right? It's like, oh, these people didn't fit in from the beginning. Who cares, right? Uh, the, these individuals were not going to change for the better of society of what they expected for these people. And it's unfortunate. Okay. It's something that I think we need to really focus on. And with the sociological imagination, how that compares to this article, how it relates to it, is that, well, maybe we need to see exactly what these people were going through. Let's put ourselves in their shoes. And at the same time, let's just fit it at a societal level. What factors, what uh, issues? push for these individuals to do the things that they did, right? You guys would, you guys understand what I'm getting at with that? Okay. That's kind of what I was looking for with your writing response. All right. That's all I have for today. So if you have your assignment turned in, great. That's awesome. I will grade that over the weekend. I'll have that done for Tuesday. So, well, yeah, why wouldn't I? He has to grade them. Yeah. <laughs>